We're here at MIT with Andrew Stern, who's working on the uh, MIT Solar Decathlon House. That's correct. It's a Department of Energy event where 20 uh, colleges are competing in a solar uh, house contest in October of this year. I'm Susan McKenna, and I'm the student team leader for the communications aspect of the Solar Decathlon at the U of I. One of the neatest things of this project, I think, is that people from different disciplines students and faculty who may never have otherwise worked together get to work together on this project. This is a wonderful experience for everyone. We're looking at a two bedroom, 800 square foot conventional house that's been outfitted with some of today's clean energy technologies. Well, this house is about 600 square feet because we have certain rules and regulations according to the contest and it's meant to be a small, easily constructible, temporary house. We want to make this uh, a house that someone can go out and inspect tomorrow with materials and uh, appliances and technologies that are somewhat readily available. We've tried to use uh, sustainable, easily harvestable materials. So one of the things we used on the floor is bamboo. Most of the furniture is modular and you'll see a piece in the corner in the bedroom. And it's made out of what's called plyboo, which is a plywood made out of bamboo. Almost all of it was designed and will be installed by our industrial design students at the university. I'm affiliated with this particular project here at MIT as, as the energy and system advisor. So for the various systems, I'm helping engineer the active uh, solar array, battery uh, storage. It is a self-facing wall, and on, on the, uh, the roof, the self-facing roof is where we'll be installing the the 9,000 watts or 9 kilowatts of okay. solar photovoltaics. I'm Nara Wang, and I'm an architecture student and the chief architect of this project. I'm Mike McCulley. I'm an associate professor of architecture, School of Architecture, University of Illinois. I've been working with the students uh, with this. It's, it's basically, it's almost two years now. The solar collectors are approximately, a, it's about a 7 kilowatt uh, house. About half of that is to charge uh, the car, which is a gym car, and uh, scoring uh, is based upon how many miles you drive the gym car. Uh, so you need about half of these collectors if you were just powering the house. What we have here are some of the passive components of the house, a solar thermal hot water system. It's evacuated tubes. This will heat and preheat uh, the house's hot water supply. You've got water coming in through the input piping, channels through these tubes which are heated passively by the sun, and then out to the holding tank or to the end use appliances. This is the plan of the house. You see these HVAC panels along the house. It's the air conditioning system heating or cooling people through radiation. What they are is they're basically the back uh, of what you see in the back of a refrigerator. Your refrigerant actually moves through the, um, these coils and the coils either heat or cool, it's a reversible heat pump. Half of the self-facing uh, facade will be this installation of evacuated tubes. Okay. And the other half will be these solar thermal mass building blocks. It's called a trom wall. The mass will absorb some of the heat during the day, keeping the house cooler. And then as the house cools down in the evening, it will release that stored energy, that stored heat, and keep the house warm throughout the night. There's a layer of aerogel, a very efficient, highly dense gel packed with oxygen bubbles. Is that this stuff right here? On yeah, on both, both the distribution. Oh, both sides. Yep, both sides. And again, what the water is the thermal mass itself. This is going to be quite a large wall. It's going to be about uh, 10 feet high by close to 20 feet long of these blocks over 200 blocks, so it's going to allow some of the natural light to filter through, and this will be part of the dining uh, and living area space, so it'll, it'll allow for a more open open space feel. These solar panels, it can be folded down during the transportation, and it erected up to absorb the energy, and then this is another double layer on the skin of the house, so that's why we feel cool, because there is no sun directly on the roof. There's like a two protection layers, as well as here it's like a shading device. So you got the sun, but you don't have the uh, sun penetration so much. This gives you an idea of where the natural prairie grasses that are native to Illinois are going to be when we get the house to Washington, D.C. They are low maintenance. They can just uh, try to self-grow by themselves. I'm watering a plant. I wish a plant is going to grow very fast. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I grow? Oh, here we go. Ah, there we go. Well, this is a SIPS panel. This is insulation integrated into a uh, building material. And uh, you'll see this 
throughout the house uh, for the walls and for the ceiling. It's uh, R27 uh, value in about six inches of material. Unlike insulation, this is practically sealed up. There's no space for any uh, any wind or moisture to seep in. We got wood structure, put some insulation inside, and we got those uh, cedar uh, sidings there. Wood first look nature, and they are local material in Illinois. So, uh, and their thermal performance is good. This building is built to be an educational unit, really, that's able to be moved around a lot. The uh, whole intention here is that we move it to Washington, D.C. We're also going to be there in the solar decathlon, and then we're taking it to Chicago to the Green Energy Center. Um, and so the, a lot of our design intentions were to, uh, to make it so it could be moved readily. All the amenities, all the appliances you would expect in a typical house, and that's part of the, uh, the competition is how much energy can you conserve. There are 10 little mini competitions within this competition and conservation is one of, the, one of the bigger ones. This is a little bit beyond do-it-yourself, but we still want you to think about it and maybe start picturing this as not the house of the future, but the house of the present. We do have to produce so much hot water, we do have to uh, wash so much clothing, uh, and we um, wash dishes, and we produce one dinner uh, for the other units around. Is that why you um, set this house up next to the poison plant garden? That's Well, actually, that's a secret. <laughs> Uh, MIT has their secrets and we have our secrets. <laughs> there, you know. It's the poison garden. Uh -huh. so this is a pokeweed. All parts are poisonous, especially roots, shoots, and unripe berries. Gives you initial burning in the mouth, followed by severe cramps, vomiting, diarrhea, blurred vision, excess salivation, weakness, seizures, and coma. Many of these are very common plants, either house plants or plants you would have in your yard. Like American holly, that's poisonous. Even the tomato, St. John's wort, is also in here, which if a little bit of it's good for you, but a lot of it's bad for you. Wow. So it's kind of neat to have our uh, solar house right over here by the uh, this operation. Garden. Yeah, the poison plant garden. <laughs> yeah. A lot of research have proved that daylights can improve mood, improve productivity. Actually, I've already written two books down here, but you just didn't see it because it's so productive. Red and black is hot in various places. Now see, I, I see this as more of a pink. Yeah. This is more about maybe a pink or a mauve. We no. tend to generalize the colors of the wire. I feel like this is kind of a burgundy. Yeah. And this is maybe like a seafoam green. So I feel the wind. Feel you, the wind more. you can't see my beautiful locks of hair flowing in it, but it's still pretty cool here. I got nightmare every day about solar decathlon. <gasps> it's only four weeks away! It's only four weeks, I'm going to die.